the book what is soul as uh, we are already uh, discussing uh, the 100 questions being mentioned and being answered in this book on a very special subject and a very important subject of soul uh, before uh, we do uh, progress on the questions uh, what i thought uh it was necessary that we review first uh, those 11 questions we have already done with dr bahulum fakir sahib and rashida sahiba and before that a very very important quotation of maulana imam sultan muhammad shah uh, which due to its importance has been mentioned in this book in the very beginning and you all uh have read this uh important quotation several times and have heard and listened to this in these sessions several times but uh, it is very very wisdom filled uh, quotation and what does it say imam sultan muhammad shah in his memoirs he writes islamic doctrine goes farther than the other great religions for it proclaims the presence of the soul perhaps minute but nevertheless existing in an embryonic state in all existence in matter in animals trees and space itself every individual every molecule every atom has a powerful soul of god but men and women being more highly developed are immensely more advanced than the infinite number of other beings known to us islam acknowledges the existence of angels of great souls who have developed themselves to the highest possible planes of the human soul and higher and who and who are centers of the forces which are scattered throughout the universe so as i already said that this is very very wisdom filled quotation and what does it say you can see that islam says and islam believes that soul is present in everything space and every individual every molecule every atom has a particle of soul and due to that it has its own spiritual relationship with the all powerful soul of god so just uh, let us analyze what mola says that everything has soul and everything has soul and everything has its own spiritual relationship with the soul of god so there is a soul of god a spirit of god and everything has a soul now the question arises this that if everything has a soul then is there a single type of soul which everything has to be uh, things uh, would have a uh, different types of souls or what and see what mola says uh, after that but men and women being more highly developed are immensely more advanced than the infinite number of other things known to us it means that human beings have a special type of soul their soul is highly developed their soul is advanced than the souls of other things it means that there is not just a single type of soul there are many types of souls and human beings have a type of soul that is very advanced that is highly developed now further what mola says islam acknowledges the existence of angels of great souls who have developed themselves to the highest possible planes of the human soul and higher and who are centers of forces which are scattered throughout the universe it means that islam acknowledges that there are some great angels and themselves to the highest possible planes of the human soul <clears throat> it means that a human being when they advance themselves to the highest possible planes then 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 they can acquire an uh, advanced soul as well and even advanced soul <clears throat> and see what mola says uh, then he says who are the centers of forces which are scattered throughout the universe it means that the universe also has a soul 
due to that the universe uh due to that those souls those, those great souls those angels are have become the centers of forces which are scattered throughout the universe so what Maulana Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah has said in this one paragraph uh, has been elaborated and explained in this book with all its dimensions. So now let us begin to review what uh, we have already uh, read uh, in this book in these uh, sessions. And first of all, let us review the types of souls. So in this book, uh, it is written that uh, there are several types of souls. The first one is mineral soul, which is all which is also known as regenerative soul. Mineral soul or regenerative soul. In Urdu, we say Ruhe Maadani. Maadan is from Maadaniyat, and Maadaniyat means minerals. So Ruhe Maadani means mineral soul, and this same soul is also known as Ruhe Takwini in Urdu and in English, regenerative soul. There is another type of soul, which is known as vegetative soul, which is also known as growing soul. In Urdu, a vegetative soul is ruhe nabati. Nabat is uh, from nabatat. Nabatat means vegetation. So ruhe nabati is the soul that belongs to nabatat or vegetation. And that is why this is vegetative soul. And it is also known as growing soul, Ruhe Namiya. Now, growing soul, as the name uh, depicts, it is related to growth. And this is the same soul, vegetative soul, also known as growing soul. Another type of soul is animal soul, which is also known as sensory soul. And animal soul means Ruhe Haiwani in Urdu, the Ru, the spirit which is which exists in the Haiwan, in animals. And it is also known as sensory soul, Ruhe Hissi, that soul that pertains to senses. Uh, now, this is the third type of soul. Another type of soul is human soul, which is also known as rational soul. Human soul, Ruhe Insani in Urdu, and rational soul in Urdu, it is Ruhe Nataka. Now, there is an another uh, type of soul, which is the Holy Spirit, Ruhe Kutsi, which is also known as light, Noor. So these are five types of souls, uh, at least, which has been those uh, have been mentioned in this book. And uh, we will go further and discuss what is Holy Spirit and some other concepts which uh, were in this book in the first 10 to 11 questions. And before that, let us see uh, what type of souls are there in the different uh, existences or different uh, creatures? So, uh, okay, the inanimate things. Now, the things, those are inanimate, they have a soul. And that soul is known as mineral soul or regenerative soul. As we already discussed, that there is a type of soul known as the mineral soul or regenerative soul. And this is the soul that exists in all inanimate things. Now, just recall what Maulana Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah said. He said that Islam proclaims that the soul is existing in everything, in every matter, in space itself. It means that everything has soul. And the soul that everything has, if that thing is inanimate, that is not an animate thing, uh, inanimate things, the soul is mineral soul or regenerative soul. And this soul is dormant. This soul is sleeping, always sleeping, till it is uh, revived in the form of another soul, which we are going to discuss later on. So mineral soul sleeps or it is dormant till it is revived in vegetative soul in the next type of soul the higher soul which is the vegetative soul so all inanimate things they have a soul which is mineral soul or regenerative soul that is dormant that sleeps now the vegetation the nabatat in urdu the vegetation 
have a soul that is known as ruhe nabati or vegetative soul which is also known as growing soul and this soul vegetative soul or growing soul is responsible for the growth of vegetation now you see that the vegetation uh has just one characteristic they can only grow and that's it they don't have senses they don't have a uh, movement they cannot move they cannot feel they cannot have senses so there is just one thing they have is that they grow so the vegetation grow due to the soul that is in them and that is vegetative soul or growing soul and this soul is responsible for their growth now let us move further and another uh, creature is animals now animals they have two souls in them two kinds of souls or two types of souls in them and those are first vegetative soul or growing soul and then the animal soul or sensory soul now you see that animals they grow their body grows and the growth of the body is due to the vegetative soul or the growing soul because the growth is the characteristic of that soul the vegetative soul but uh, in addition to that the animals they have senses as well and they can move freely the plants uh, the vegetation they cannot move freely but the animals they can move freely and they have senses as well they can see they can hear so the senses and the movement comes from the animal soul or the sensory soul as the name depicts uh, itself it is the soul uh, uh, which has the responsibility of senses of movement so animals have two types of souls vegetative soul that is responsible uh, for the growth of their body and the animal soul uh, that is responsible for the senses and movement now the human beings and human beings have three types of souls in them the first is vegetative soul or the growing soul and it is uh, due to this vegetative or growing soul that the body of human beings grow the animal soul or the sensory soul and it is due to this soul that uh, the human beings have senses they have feelings and they can move freely so the senses and feeling and movement come from this animal and sensory soul but in addition to these two things growth and senses and feeling uh, the human beings have speech and discernment as well and the soul that is responsible for the speech and discernment is the human soul or the rational soul the ruh insani or ruh natika that is responsible for the speech and discernment now you can see that uh, a body of a human being grows and uh, there are some uh, things in our body uh, in which there is no senses now this is proved uh, from this point that uh, when we cut our nails or when we cut our hairs we cannot feel anything it means that in our hairs and in our nails there is just one soul which is the vegetative soul but in all those organs in our body uh, which do the work related to the senses like uh, seeing or hearing or uh, uh, touching now the touch is almost throughout the body except the nails and hairs so the animal soul and sensory soul exists in our body uh, wherever there are senses but not in nails and hairs because there they can just grow there are no senses in hairs and nails but the human soul or rational soul is in our uh, brain because the speech and discernment is there in our brains uh, uh, in medical science we say there are neurons there so the ruhe natika or ruhe insani is here in our brain through which we do speech and discernment now the perfect man and the perfect man means uh, the prophet or the imam how many souls do they have they have all three souls present in any ordinary human being plus they have one more soul and that is the holy spirit the ruh qudsi 
which is also known as light or noor now this holy spirit uh, ruhe qudsi uh, or the light noor is also known as divine spirit the spirit of god or the divine light and there are several quranic references several quranic ayat in which uh, this divine spirit or holy spirit or noor divine light has been mentioned like three uh, references which are mentioned here we can just go uh, quickly from them uh, and discuss them the holy spirit or the divine spirit <clears throat> it is mentioned in surah 15 uh, verse 29 when god uh, says fa iza sabaituhu wa nafakhtu fihi min ruhi faqau lahu sajidin so when i have made him and have bred a uh, breath into him of my spirit you fall down prostrating yourselves unto him so this is the speech of god the command of god to the angels when god uh, created adam and uh, he commanded the angels and said that when i have made him and have breathed into him of my spirit you all angels you fall down prostrating yourselves unto him now this is a very important ayat and the important portion here is ruhi now you can see in arabic it is written ruhi ruh means a spirit or soul or ru but when we add the ya at the end now this ya is uh basically an attached pronoun in arabic and this attached pronouns means my so ruhi means my spirit so what god says to the angels is that i am going to breathe my own spirit my soul into adam now you see that when we say that uh, the divine spirit now this ruhi my spirit which god says this is divine spirit this is the holy spirit and god says in quran itself that god has breathed his own soul his divine spirit his holy spirit in adam now adam was a perfect man and after adam uh, the perfect man the prophets or the imams continue to come into this world so right now maulana hazrat imam the imam of the time is the perfect man and he has all those three souls which all human beings all ordinary human beings have but he has uh, another soul which is the divine spirit in him because this is the command of god this is what god says that he has breathed into a perfect man his own soul now one more occasion in uh, quran uh, is this uh, ayat surah 42 ayat 52 Uh, in which god says bakazalika awhayna ilayka ruham min amrina and thus we revealed to you a spirit from our command now this is uh, god's uh, message or speech to the holy prophet hazrat muhammad what god says is we revealed to you a spirit from our command and amrina here means our command or our amr and amr is a word the word of command which is also known as in urdu alam e amr the world of command so it means that from the world of command a ruh a spirit was revealed to the holy prophet and what uh, quran says later on in this ayat walakinna ja'alnahu nuran and we made that soul that spirit a noor a light so you see this is a very very important ayat that what god says here is that god has revealed a spirit from his command from his world of command to the holy prophet and then god has made that spirit a light he made that spirit a light so the divine spirit is also known as the spirit of the quran because what was revealed to the holy prophet is known as quran so quran uh, was not revealed in the form we have to the holy prophet it was revealed in the form of a spirit it was revealed in the form of a light and this ayat this verse is a clear proof of that that what was revealed to the holy prophet was a spirit and it was a light and that was the light of quran that was the spirit of quran that was the divine spirit or that was the divine light that was uh, revealed to the holy prophet 
So you see what was uh, breathed into Adam was divine spirit. And this ayat uh, says the same thing that a Holy Spirit, a divine spirit was revealed or what was breathed into the Holy Prophet as well. Another occasion in the Quran, which says the same thing is a very famous ayat. Surah 5, ayat 15. Indeed, there has come to you from Allah a light and a manifest book. And this is Surah 5, Ayat 15. So here also uh, it mentions the same thing that from God, what was revealed was a manifest book, which uh, in the present form is the Holy Quran. But there was a light that was also revealed. And that light was in the Batin in the heart of the Holy Prophet. So the Holy Prophet was light himself, uh, which we say embodied light, nur -e mujassam because the Holy Light, the divine light or the divine spirit was inside him. And it was the spirit of God, which in the first ayat we see, we saw that Ruhi, the uh, Ru of God, the spirit of God. Now, a very important question here. Can other human beings also attain the Holy Spirit? Because what we have uh, learned till now is all the ordinary human beings, they have three souls. The vegetative soul, the animal soul, and the rational or human soul. The Holy Spirit is in the <clears throat> perfect man. In addition to all those three spirits, all those three souls, they have the Holy Spirit. Now, is it possible for the other human beings to attain that Holy Spirit that is in the perfect man? So it uh, is answered clearly uh, in the Quran in a very important verse, which is Surah 4, Ayat 69. And what it says is, وَمَنْ يُتِئِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَأَ الَّذِينَ أَنْ أَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ Whoso obeys Allah and the Messenger, they are with those unto whom Allah has shown favor of the prophets and the truthful and the martyrs and the righteous. The best of company are they. So here it is very clear that Allah has shown favor to the prophets the Ambiya, the truthful, the Siddiqeen, the Shuhada, and the Swalihin. And what was that favor of God unto these four kinds of uh, people, the prophets, the Siddiqeen, Siddiqeen means Asas, the Shuhada, which are Imams, and the Swalihin, which are uh, the Hujjats or Peers. And that favor was that they were all bestowed with the Holy Spirit with the divine spirit as God, as God himself says that he breathed into Adam his spirit and in the case of Holy Prophet he says that he revealed a spirit from his command. So that special favor of God for uh, the Ambiya means the Nutaka, the Siddiqeen means the Asasan, the Shuhada means all Imams and the Swalihin. Swalihin means uh, the Hujjats and Peers the uh, dignitaries of religion who after taking Islam from Imam reached that highest planes, highest possible planes, which uh, we saw in uh, the quotation of uh, Moran Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah. So these are the people who were favored yeah, or who are being favored by Allah in the form of divine spirit. But what God says in the beginning of this ayat, whoso obeys Allah and the messenger they are with those unto whom Allah has shown favor. It means that whoso obeys Allah and the messenger and the obedience to Allah and the messenger is through the imam of the time. So whoever obeys the imam of the time is with the imam of the time. Is with those unto whom Allah has shown favor. And those are prophets and imams and hujjats. So... What Morana, what Hazrat Ibrahim says, and this is in Quran, that Ibrahim says that uh, whoever obeys me is from among me. So this is also, uh, this ayat also testifies the same thing. So now 
this has been proved that other human beings uh, who reach the final destination of the religion on the straight path, on the sirat e mustaqim in the light of the guidance of the Imam of the time, are also favored and rewarded in the same way, the same way in which the prophets, the Imams, the Asasan, and the Hujjatan, and the peers were favored by God. And th that favor and that reward in, is in the form of the Holy Spirit or the Divine Spirit. So the, the Divine Spirit is attainable by other human beings uh, when they obey the Imam of the time and reach that highest possible planes uh, of the human soul. Another uh, proof of this uh, uh, answer of this very important concept is in memoirs by Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah. And he says, all are the sons of Adam in the flesh and all carry in them a spark of the divine light. Everyone should strive his best to see that this spark be not extinguished but rather develop to that full companionship on high, which was the vision expressed in the last words of the prophet on his deathbed, the vision of that blessed state, which he saw clearly awaiting him. Now see, this uh, quotation is so wisdom filled and so important. What Mola says that we are all the sons of Adam. We are all the sons of Adam in flesh. And we all carry in us a spark of the divine light. That divine light that was breathed into Adam by God, and we all carry a spark of that. We all carry a, a spark of that. And now it is upon us that either we don't obey the Imam of the time and we extinguish this spark, or we obey the Imam of the time and uh, this spark uh, is developed through that obedience, through ibadat, through zikr through uh, the faith. So if we develop this spark, then uh, it is going to become that full divine light that was breathed into Adam. And see what Imam says, but rather develop to that full companionship on high. rafiq e ala That was the word of uh, the Holy Prophet uh, on his deathbed. He was praying that, oh God, uh, do uh, meet me with the uh, rafiq e ala the companionship on high. So that was the vision expressed by the Holy Prophet. And what Mawlana Imam Sultan Mamasha says that every human being should strive his best that this spark should not be extinguished, but it should be developed to that companionship on high. That means that divine spirit or divine light. It should become that divine light. The spark should be developed in full divine light. And uh, uh, there is a verse of uh, Hafiz Shirazi in which he says, Faiz e Ruhul Qudus Arbaaz Madad Farmayat Digaran Ham Bikunan Anchi Masiha Mikard. If the grace of the Holy Spirit ever helps again, others too will perform the same miracles as Jesus. Now, this uh, verse of Hafiz also says the same thing that if the Holy Spirit ever helps again, because that was the Holy Spirit that helped Jesus or Hazrat Isa and due to that he performed the miracle and if the Holy Spirit helps again and uh, we already proved that the Holy Spirit can be attained by uh, the human beings in the light of the guidance of the Imam of the time then everyone can perform the same miracles as Jesus. Now that is another question or another debate if they perform it or not but they have the capability of performing the same miracles as Jesus did if they attain the Holy Spirit or the Holy Light. Now, uh, the divisibility of soul. Uh, thought soul in itself is indivisible because uh, soul is known as indivisible. Uh, it is known as Jauhare Basit in Urdu or in English it is known as simple. Simple means that cannot be divided further into its uh, other compounds or other elements. So as a whole, soul is indivisible, but each kind of soul, whether it is a mineral soul, the vegetative soul, the animal soul, or the human soul, or the Holy Spirit, 
It comprises of innumerable particles. Now, every soul has innumerable particles. Or what does, what does this mean is each cell of our body contains a particle of soul because uh, the soul we have, it is not just one soul. Yes, it is one soul in the sense that we have our I or Anna uh, and that is one. But the soul which everyone has in their body, in each cell of their body, there is a particle of soul. And that particle of soul may be of vegetative soul, of animal soul, of human soul, depending on the role and function of that cell. If that cell is dead, then it contains the particle of mineral soul, like any other inanimate thing. So now this is very clear that uh, in a human body, there are several cells or they, there can be some cells which are dead. And if there are some dead cells in our body, then those dead cells must be uh, containing the particles of mineral soul because mineral soul is dormant. Now, there are some uh, parts of our body that uh, have that uh, should be uh, having the particles of vegetative soul. As I already discussed with you that in our nails, in our hairs, uh, all the cells of our nails and all the cells of our hairs, they just have vegetative soul because they don't have senses. When we cut hairs, when we cut nails, we don't feel a pain. It means that the cells in our hairs and in our nails, they just have the particles of vegetative soul. And all other organs in our body, all other parts in our body that have senses, like the sense of hearing, the sense of seeing, the sense of touching, touching is throughout the body. So the animal soul uh, is throughout our body because there are senses, there is movement in our body. And human soul, the particles of human soul are in our uh, brain. Uh, so in our brain, there is there are the particles of human soul so according to the role and function of each cell in our body they have particles of soul now this was all about the divisibility of soul now there is a soul of universe the whole universe is immersed in the ocean of a magnificent soul okay and this all embracing soul has several names in uh our literature in smiley literature uh, it is known as the universal soul the nafsikulli it is also known as the soul of souls the ruhul arwa the pedestal of god or the dice of god kursiya khuda and the garden tab guarded tablet lohe mehfuz uh, which is also mentioned in uh, the holy quran as well so the whole universe has a soul which is the nafsikulli or the universal soul and see what Mola have said. Mola has said uh, in the memoirs, it is said that we live, move, and have our beings in God. It means that this soul of the universe, the universal soul, the nafsikulli, it is basically the soul of God. And what Mola says is very clear. It is said that we live, move, and have our being in God. So the whole universe is immersed in that magnificent soul, which is the soul of God, the universal soul. And in the language of Quran, what Quran says in a very, very important ayat, Surah Nur, ayat 35, Allahu nuru samawati walars. God is the light of the heavens and the earth. So the heavens and the earth are immersed in the divine light, the Holy Spirit. Okay. So uh, this was a quick review of what we have already uh, discussed in previous classes on what is soul uh, by Dr. Fakir Saheb, Bahrul Uloom, and Alwaiza Rashida Saheba. Now, since they have asked me to continue this, uh, these sessions and to uh, move further with more questions, so I'm going to uh, take uh, uh, this uh, occasion and uh, continue uh, with some questions. So question number 12, uh, this question is, 
where is a human being's soul in the state of sleeping where do dreams occur in the body or in the soul that is where is the world of dreams now this is question number 12 in this question and what does it ask is when a person is in the state of sleeping whenever he or she sleeps where is their soul and where do dreams occur do dreams occur in the body or in the soul or uh, in other words this question can be rephrased as where is the world of dreams now the answer we get uh, in this book of this question is when human beings sleep the soul does not leave the body completely rather its grip over some of the senses is loosened and it continues to attend to itself thus in dreams we do not go anywhere rather we see them within our own soul see studies in spiritualism and dreams now this question has been uh, answered and replied in a very wisdom filled manner in these just uh, five lines and it says that human when human beings sleep the soul does not leave the body completely but it does leave the body uh, and its grip over some of the senses is loosened but it is not that uh, the soul leaves the body completely but its grip over some of the sons, uh, senses is loosened and because of this it continues to attend to itself so in dreams we do not go anywhere rather we see them within our own soul so when we sleep we go in our soul and we see the dreams in our own soul now let us uh, discuss uh, this question and this reply further while being in the physical world all ordinary human beings can at a time experience one of the following states the first is state of wakefulness then the state of imagination and then the state of dreams okay now this is what everyone uh, and every human being experiences in their lives while we are here in the physical world we experience one of these three states either we are in the state of wakefulness or we can say that we are attending to our senses like is uh, like uh, at this very moment i am speaking to you so i am in my state of wakefulness and i am uh, speaking to you and you are all hearing to me you are all listening to me so you are also in the state of wakefulness and you are also uh, attending to your senses you are also seeing these slides and uh, so you are already uh, having those senses uh, functioning but some people they go to the state of imagination now in the state of imagination what happens is the grip of soul on senses is a bit loosened because we are in the state of imagination now where does imagination occurs it occurs here in the brain so does uh, in the state of imagination now you see when a person he is in the state of imagination he is not listening to what uh, the people around him are talking he is not listening to them he might be imagining with open eyes but he is not seeing uh, the uh, world he might have he might has his eyes open but he is not seeing he is imagining and similarly there is a third state which is the state of dreams and in the state of dreams again uh, the grip of our soul on our senses is loosened further so this can be understood in this way uh, that the grip of soul over body and its senses is maximum in the state of wakefulness and is minimum in that of dreams now in the physical world if we are in the state of wakefulness the grip of our soul over our body and senses is maximum 
because we are uh, having our senses functioning very well. In the state of imagination, the soul's grip over body and senses is loosened a bit. But in the state of dreams, it is loosened further and the soul's grip over body and senses is minimum. Now, when the state in the state of dreams, the grip of our soul or the control of our soul is minimum over our body and senses, it means that now the soul is attending to itself. The soul is attending to itself. And this is very important. Now, when soul does attend to itself, what does it do? What does the soul do? Now, our literature, religious literature tells us that dream is the x-ray of the soul in which a person is informed about the state of their soul, that whether the soul is progressing on the straight path or regressing. Now, this is a blessing of God. This is a divine blessing on us that daily in night, when we see dreams, we see the state of our soul, that whether our soul is progressing on the sirat -e mustaqim or whether it is regressing, whether we are uh, going forward uh, in deen, in iman, in faith, or whether we are not going forward, we are standing at the same position or whether we are regressing. Now, this is such a divine blessing that dream is the x-ray of soul. And uh, this is because the soul is attending to itself when we are sleeping. And uh, obviously, this is not our topic uh, to discuss the dreams. So what I uh, can do here is I can suggest you that for deeper understanding of this topic of dreams, and of how dream can tell us that uh, whether our soul is progressing or not, uh, for deeper understanding, uh, you can refer to these books of our uh, teacher, revered teacher, Alama Nasiruddin Nasir Hunzai, uh, like the book Studies in Spiritualism and Dreams. In Urdu, this is Mutalae Ruhaniya Tukhab. And then three books, Spiritual Healing, Healing Through Knowledge, and Quranic Healing. And these three books are uh, combined in a book known as Book of Healing, Kitabul Ilaj. And in all these three books, Spiritual Healing, Healing Through Knowledge, and Quranic Healing, there are chapters pertaining to uh, dreams. So in these books, you can see that uh, how dreams tell you that uh, when we uh, wake up in the morning, you can analyze your dreams and you can have a clear idea of uh, whether your soul is progressing or not, because your soul is daily communicating with you. Our soul is daily communi communicating with us and it is telling us, it is giving us an x-ray of itself that whether the soul is happy or not. So you can have a deeper understanding uh, referring to these books. Now, question number 13. Uh, I see uh, we can have uh, some 10 more minutes. So we can just go through one more question. And this is Zikr and soul. What is the, co what is the cause of the pleasant effect upon the soul during Ibadat to Bandagi? And what is the cause of the sadness of heart due to negligence and disobedience? Now this question asks us, uh, that when we do ibadat, when we do bandagi, it causes a very pleasant effect on our soul. But when we are neglectful of uh, ibadat and when we disobey the holy commands of our faith, of our imam, and due to that negligence and disobedience, our heart goes to sadness. There is a sadness in our heart. So what is the cause of that sadness? And what is the cause of that pleasant effect when we do Ibadat and Pandagi? So the question is uh, replied in this uh, manner. The pure and sincere remembrance of God and his sacred slavery and obedience are the paradise of hope and certainty for a mu'min's soul. Contrary to this, negligence 
and disobedience are the hell of fear and ignorance. This sheds light on the two opposite states of why happiness can be attained in the former state and why sadness is experienced in the latter. Now see, <clears throat> uh, this reply, this answer, what does it say? That the pure and sincere remembrance of God and God's slavery, his obedience, are the paradise of hope. And when you are in paradise of hope, certainly your soul should be happy. And when, due to our neglectfulness, due to our disobedience, because negligence and disobedience are the hell of fear and ignorance, so when we are in the state of fear, we are in the state of ignorance, we should be said, we must be said. So uh, this sheds light on the two opposite states. Now these two opposite states are the states of happiness and sadness. And why happiness can be attained in the former state in which we do zikr and ibadat and we obey the imam of the time. We are happy. And why sadness is experienced in the other state when we are neglectful of our bandagi and zikr. Why we experience sadness. So these two opposite states, let us uh, discuss uh, it a little further as well. The principle of opposites. Now, everything in this universe has an opposite. The opposite of darkness is light. The opposite of uh, heat is hot, is cold. So everything in this universe has opposite. Now, this is the uh, principle of opposites. Kanune azdad. Everything has a zid. Everything has, a, has an opposite. Similarly, remembrance and obedience on one side and its opposite is negligence and disobedience. Now, remembrance and disobedience is light. And contrary to that, negligence and disobedience is the darkness. And when remembrance and disobedience is the light, then it is the light of happiness. Your soul or our soul should be happy because it sees light when we remember God, when we obey God. But when we are neglectful of God, when we disobey the Imam of the time, our soul is dark. It goes to darkness. It experiences darkness. And so it should be said. Now, this is the principle of opposites. And what Quran says, it says, Allah bi zikrillahi tatma'innul qulub. Verily, in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find satisfaction. So the satisfaction of heart the happiness of heart or the light of heart is in the remembrance of Allah, is in the remembrance of God. And this is because of this, that when we remember God, when we do our zikr, when we do our tasbih, our, finds, our heart finds <clears throat> satisfaction and it sees light, it is happy. And in the memoirs, what Maulana Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah says, Prayer is a daily necessity, a direct communication of the spark with the universal flame. Now see what uh, we uh, quoted from the memoirs in the very beginning, then uh, in the middle as well, in which Mola say, said that uh, all human beings have a spark of that divine light, that divine flame. And that spark, now that spark should communicate directly with the universal flame on a daily basis. See what Imam says. And all these quotations are from a single chapter of the memoirs. The chapter that is chapter 8 of the uh, memoirs that is published in London. So that is a single chapter which has been published by the Tariqa board as a separate booklet as well. Uh, Islam, the religion of my ancestors. Now that is that chapter. And in that chapter, in this line, what Mawla says, prayer is a daily necessity, a direct communication of the spark with the universal flame. So the divine spark, which we have inside us in the form of soul, it should communicate directly on a daily basis with that divine light, that universal flame. And if we do this daily, then what will happen? It will progress. Our soul will become happy. It will experience light. And one day, inshallah, if Mawla 
wills then uh, we can have that uh, that uh, vision of the holy prophet the companionship of on high that is a very very sublime uh, rank it is not that easy but it is not that impossible it is possible and if we do direct communication with god in the form of prayer we do zikr we do tasbih we do obedience to the imam of the time and uh, then it is possible to attain that rank so i should stop here and uh, uh, thank you very much everyone uh, who is here who is attending uh, the session and inshallah after a fortnight time inshallah on 25th june we will uh, try to do some uh, more questions uh, in this series so thank you very much once again